Hello and welcome back. In this section we're going to continue looking at our straightforward example of um, sales in a convenience store or, or a number of convenience stores and what we're going to do first is just to look at formatting the pivot chart that we created before. First thing I'm going to do though is to change the data selection I've actually now got a number of places I can do that. I can do it here. I can click on department on the chart and filter from there. So if I remove select all and just select breads, flatbread, oatmeal and snacks, click on OK. And as you saw before, everything is updated. The selection shown in the pivot table and the chart are all selected. The sum of value I have here is still a percentage of total sales. But of course, this is the percentage of total sales for the selected departments. So just over 50% of the total sales in these four departments is down to breads. Now let's once again take a look at formatting the pivot chart itself. We've seen ways of selecting data for it. Um, if you want to actually format it, you may want to use it in a report, you may want to move it within your workbook. It's very often the case that it's a good idea to get the field list out of the way while you work on it. I mentioned before that usually if you click within table or chart the field list will normally reappear but actually if you've deliberately closed it you need to open it quite deliberately as well there are two main ways of doing that if you currently have the chart selected then on the analyze tab there is a button that says field list click that and the field list is shown you close it again if you're within the pivot table then you have a pivot table tools group with options and design in it. If you click in options, over on the right there's a field list button there that shows the field list for you. So I'm going to close this again and now let's start working on this chart. With the chart selected we get the group of tabs up here, design layout format analyzer. Let's go to the design tab I'm going to change the chart type. I'm going to change it to a pie chart. I'm going to change it to a 3D pie chart. Click on OK. It all works exactly the same as it did before and I can even go into my filter here and say decide well I don't really want snacks included. Click on OK and everything is updated. Now there are certain types of chart you can't use as pivot charts including scatter charts and bubble charts but for the purposes of analysis they're not the sort of charts we'd be using anyway so that's not really a restriction. So let's change the title here um, we're going to change it to sales by product OK, and we're going to remove the legend. And finally, we'll add some data labels. So let's go for more data label options. We're going to put the category name and the value and uh, let's not have leader lines click on close there we are so flatbread and oatmeal are fine let's move breads just over to here and there we are sales by product um, that's pretty good now of course we can still use usual facilities to increase the size of the chart for instance. Um, Excel may move some of the labels to less convenient places but that's fine and we can back in design we can choose 
from available chart styles so we could go for something like this and the one thing you may have noticed which is different is this sum of value up here now this is one of the buttons that the pivot chart and table mechanism in Excel 2010 puts on the charts um, if you go to the analyze tab there is a button here field buttons and if you click the top of that to switch off the field buttons then any of those buttons will disappear you can of course put them back on again if you need to so now we are going to return to the original field list and we're now going to go to the next stage with this pivot table because we're going to introduce one of the other variables we're going to introduce branch so in the field list click on branch Excel 2010 works out that branch should be one of the axis fields it's not going to try to do any kind of calculation on it as it did with values and what you can see has happened here is that for our selected group of departments so starting with breads flatbread oatmeal snacks it has then categorized or subcategorized by branch of store those percentages so for instance for breads of the 56.63 percent of our total that is contributable to breads this is now broken down by our five stores now at this point you can probably start to see the power of pivot tables and let's now do a few things to show how easy it is to change this particular slice of the data that we're looking at let's go down first of all to the Sigma drop zone down here we selected earlier on here as our value field settings we change to sum shown as a percentage of the grand total let's just return it to sum as it was before click on OK and we've now got a total value of sales for each of those the other thing we can do down here if you look at the axis fields department and branch I can actually click on branch and drag it above department and watch now what happens we now have the branches as our first level and then within that the departments the types of foodstuffs within the branches and obviously everything else is updated in line with this so of course I can filter on branch now so I could undo select all and say just look at Boston and Chicago again everything is updated accordingly now there's one other very important thing now and that is that as we look at the chart here we can see that if effectively we have eight values that's four different departments two different branches and the structure relating these although it's shown in the way that the axis is marked doesn't really reflect the nested nature of this information it's as though these are eight separate departments now of course there may be situations in which that is exactly the way that we want the data to look but if we actually wanted a structure whereby it's got a more two-dimensional feel the clue to what has happened here by default with Excel 2010 is that both branch and department are shown as row labels and in fact you can see they are row labels they are structured there are as we move these around departments within branches but they're both row labels if we wanted to get a two-dimensional structure all we need to do is to take department and drop it in the column labels drop zone what happens then is that we get a completely different look to our data because now the columns are the departments the food types and the rows 
are our two branches that are shown. Both of them are filtered so on the column labels that is the department types we could perhaps put in hot teas and on the row labels that is the branches we could include another branch so we could put Denver in there and of course we have this type of clustered column chart representing all of that data and looking pretty similar to the clustered column charts that we looked at before. The next thing we're going to do is a very important feature of pivot tables and charts but it needs to be treated with a little bit of care. We have then our branches as rows and we have our departments as columns. What I'm going to do is to remove departments altogether. So to get rid of department I can just double click on it to bring up the menu and I can just say remove field. And that takes it out of the legend fields drop zone. So all I have now are my three um, branches with the total sales for each. What I'm now going to do though is I'm going to add date. Now this is a bit of a dangerous thing to do with a very very large amount of data um, because the dates are by day and there are over 30,000 transactions um, but Excel 2010 copes with it okay. And if I now drag branch over to the legend fields, that's the column ones. And I've now got something a little bit closer to a readable chart. Now the problem is with daily data that's extremely difficult to follow. So what I really want to do is to report by say month and that's what we're going to do next. Now one of the differences when you're dealing with dates for example is that although you have a filter here so if I click on the filter the filter covers every day over a long period of time and it still only does whole days so I could do as I did with branch and department at different times and select a subset but what it doesn't do is to total up by date to larger time denominations like month. The way that I do that is I go to the options tab within the pivot table tools and there's a function there group field and if I click on group field Excel 2010 recognizes it as a date field it gives me my minimum starting date as a default ending at as another default I could change those if I wanted to but it also lets me group and I'm going to group this data by months my section uh, my choice is everything from seconds to years but months will, I think would be good click on OK and what you now see is much better I've got a by month list of sales for my three selected branches with the total value of sales and I also have the clustered column chart to go with it. So that's how we do grouping. Now dates are very often the types of field we'll use for groupings and this is a pretty clever feature of Excel 2010's pivot tables and charts which can really help in reporting a lot of data over a long period of time. So we've covered many more of the basic features of pivot tables and charts and we're going to return to them again in the next section where we're going to step up again and look at some of the more advanced features including the use of filters and slices. So I'll see you then.